K-means is very simple, but also very effective on supervised clustering algorithm. It tries to partition the dataset into K predefined clusters, where each data point belongs to only one group. Cool. Let's go through a simple two-dimensional example to have a better understanding of this idea. There are three major steps. In step one, we randomly choose K data points from the dataset as initial center. In this case, k is equal to 3, and we will discuss how do we choose k later. OK, once we have these centers, in step 2, we can calculate the distance between the data points to these centers. Then we can assign each data points to the closest centers. In this example, for point A, we compute its distance to C1, C2, and C3, respectively. And after comparing the lengths of D1, D2, and D3, we figured out that D3 is the smallest. Therefore, we assign A to C3. We then move to point B and follow the same procedure. Cool. We keep repeating this process until all the data points are assigned. Then we calculate the center's new position by taking the average of all the points within the cluster. Keep repeating this process until all the centers stop moving. Now it's the coding time. We are going to show you how to train and visualize k-means algorithm in Jupyter Notebook. Let's first introduce all necessary libraries. Here we are using NumPy for data manipulation. Make blobs from sklearn dataset for data preparation. k-means from sklearn cluster for model training. And matplotlib and cborn for visualization. Cool. So the first step is to create and load the dataset. Make blobs from SQLearn dataset will help us to generate some Gaussian blobs for clustering. Now let's go through the parameters of this function. N sample is the total number of points equally divided among the clusters in this dataset. N feature is the number of features for each samples. In this case, we have N features as two, which means the dataset is in two dimension. We set centers equal to three, which means there are three clusters generated in this dataset. Cluster STD is a standard deviation of each Gaussian cluster. The random state parameter is just the random state for the data preparation. We can reproduce the data generation process with the same random state setting. Great, now let's have a look at the generated X and the Y. X has 200 samples in it. There are two columns in the dataset. Each column represents a feature for that sample. Y is just a list of clusters labels for each sample. As expected, both of them has 200 samples in them. Now let's try to visualize the dataset in the plot. Here we are using scatter function from matplotlib to visualize the dataset in two dimensions. If you have more than two features, you can use some dimension reduction techniques like PCA to reduce the features into two dimension and then visualize it in a two dimensional space. From the plot, you may find that there are a lot of overlapping between different clusters and there are no clear boundary between them. The reason for that is that we have that the Gaussian standard deviation as one, which is a relatively large standard deviation. Here, I encourage you to experiment with the standard deviation parameter offline. Try to reduce it to a smaller value, and you will find a clear boundary between different clusters. Cool, let's move to how to train a k-means model with this dataset. Here, we are using k-means class in sklearn. As usual, let's have a closer look at the parameters in this class. First, we have n clusters set as 3. N cluster is the number of clusters to form as well as the number of centers to generate. This is one of the most important hyperparameters for this model, and we will tell you how to choose this number soon. Init defines the method for initialization. Here we set it as random. In this case, we choose three observations at random from the dataset for the initial centers. N init is the number of times that k means algorithm will be run with different centers as the initial states. The final result will be the best output of the n-init consecutive runs in terms of evaluation metrics. In the k-min class, we can access the metrics as an attribute which defines as the sum of squared distance of samples to the closest cluster center. These metrics can be also used with grid search to find the best n-cluster parameters. 
The max iteration parameter defines the maximum number of iterations of the k-means algorithm for a single run. As we have shown before, k-means is an iterative method. The center will finally converge to some final position. So the tolerance parameters defines how do we declare convergence based on the difference between the matrix between different iterations. As euro, we define random states for the purpose of reproducing. The next step from the code perspective is very straightforward. It has only one line of code, which will help us to do model training and prediction at the same time. It is just a list of integers to represent which cluster each sample belongs to. Cool. The final step is to plot the final cluster prediction. I'm not going to go through the details of the code here, but I will provide a link to the full notebook on our YouTube channel and Instagram page. Finally, let's have a look at the animation of the k-means cluster algorithm. Start from iteration 1. For this particular example, the model converge at around 7 iterations. So this is a brief introduction of how k-means work. If you found this video interesting and want to learn more, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe to our channel.